basically, I haven't spoken to you in like, I think a couple of months uh, over Skype or anything. How, how's, how's everything going? So everything is going pretty awesome. So life is, uh, life is super busy right now. Um, it's filled with a lot of different um, sessions. You know, my coaching has been really kicking off with these clients that um, I just see they're making such tremendous impact in their life. And none of it has to do with me, which is really cool. It has to do with their openness and willingness to just want something different and new in their life. And I just get to be an honest like participant, but at the same time, a bystander of just seeing all the work that they put in. So I'm super grateful. Shout out to my clients who are killing it with their goals. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm doing really good. You know, I'm happy that I get to you know, be back on here and talk to you. It's been, yeah, you're right. It's been quite some time. How have you been? Yeah, it's been, it feels like it's been forever. I've uh, definitely loved the, the coaching stuff as well. I think I've been doing a few more sessions than I'm used to. So um, I just started taking more time off, to be honest. Here's something that was, that was quite interesting. I realized that I was judging myself for having the desire to relax and enjoy temporary pleasures like, go to the movies or, you know, order a whole pizza and eat the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, those are always the best. It's funny because when you start to sort of really be courageous and step into this calling of yours, you know, um, you kind of have to realize that you've got to continually fill your cup up. And then when your cup is like even overflowing you know, to the point where it's giving others, that's the way you actually benefit more people. So you kind of have to give to yourself in order to give to others. It's a concept a lot of coaches, you know, um, forget about because it's kind of like, I want to be there for everyone. I kind of, you know, I want to do this and feel passionate about it, but you know, you've got to reset, you have to re-energize your, um, your battery. And uh, I learned that myself, a, you know, a while back, and I still, every day I have to put it into practice because your frequency, right, we're all about the high vibes, has to be at its most potent. And the only way to do that is by giving yourself that, you know, date to the movies or, you know, eating mm. that pizza. You know, yeah. Not in the sense of like the whole pie, but if that's how you feel, you should definitely do <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, it, it was an interest. It's been an interesting couple of weeks, actually. Like I started doing um, yin yoga, right? Like very relaxed yoga because I had some car trouble. So I didn't have a car for like a couple of weeks. And um, normally I'm very on the go all the time. I'm always doing something. I'm very high energy. I move around a lot and I don't like to sit still. I don't like to sit down for long periods of time. So I realized like I'm always on the go, very yang dominant most of the time. And I don't balance it enough with enough yin. And this yoga practice, like it's not like the one I'm used to. There's very few positions where you hold the stretch for a long time. And it's just it really given me perspective on a lot of the way I behave a lot. Like it's helped me to look at and assess my own behavior and observe like, OK, I need to slow down a lot in a lot of different areas of my life, like especially when it comes to work, just giving yourself breaks and stuff. I realize like I don't give myself enough breaks. And it's so funny, like saying that on just this Friday, just gone yesterday, um, I went to, I went around the corner to do med, um, to this green space and I went to do meditation with some of my colleagues. And it was so good. It was so relaxing and it just felt so nice. But yeah, introducing a lot of yin has been my thing for this last couple of weeks, months. Yeah, and it's it's that's really cool. I've actually never I've I mean I've heard of yin, but I've never heard of yin yoga. So that's really that's new for me. So thank you for teaching me that because I didn't um, you know, I've never I've never heard of it. But um it's funny because I've been um you know, I do my, I like to do my cleanses, right? And so I kind of got called to do a fast. And um, this is probably going to be the longest one I've done. I usually fast, um, you know, the longest one I've done probably was anywhere between a, like 11 and 14 days. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this one, I was actually inspired by Ramadan. I'm not Muslim because, you know, as you know, I'm spiritual. Um, but I love the fact that they're the, dis the discipline that they 
you know, commit to this spiritual practice for, um, for 30 days. And so I felt really inspired and called to do my own version of that fast. Mm. And uh, right now I'm on day 11 and it's teaching me so much about this idea of how um, to treat, like before I thought I knew about mindfulness and this fast is teaching me all different other paths of mindfulness. Um, you know, basically you have to get up like a lot more slower because, you know, you're kind of, you know, lower on energy and, um, it teaches you how to be more, you know, more caring about your body and yourself because we're so conditioned and programmed to be like, go, go, go that our minds sometimes are too fast to our bodies. You know what I mean? Mm. So our bodies are super like, it, we put them through the ringer, you know, but, <laughs> but like our bodies truthfully, like they just want to be, they want to be in, you know, basically what I was saying was um, on day nine, it was really, um, you know, I had no energy. I was really considering breaking my fast, you know, just to kind of give my, you know, just being like, okay, if this is what I need, I got to do what I got to do. And um, I ended up realizing um, that my intuition was telling me, don't quit, just rest. And so I was like, that's such an interesting concept. Because when we're feeling physically down or low, we think that we should quit. But in reality, it, our bodies are just saying, rest. If we're feeling mentally down and mentally low, our, our minds are not telling us to quit, you know, they're telling us to rest. So it's, it's such an interesting and fascinating like concept because, um, you know, it made me think a lot about, you know, mental illness and things like that and how sometimes you get so caught up in, um, in feeling like you want to quit or something and, you know, quit your life, God forbid. But in reality, your mind is just saying rest, like meaning take a break from your, those thoughts. You know, the same thing with your, with your body, you know, when, if you're like running a marathon or something, or you're putting yourself through, you know, something like hunger pains, you know, through uh, the fast, it's just your body saying rest. So um, yeah, it's teaching me a lot about mindfulness and um, how to be more gentle with the way that I approach life. Well, wow, that's so cool. I want to start doing some sort of fasting. Uh, I don't, I'm making excuses for it now, but yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> gonna I'm gonna start at some point because I've I've heard so many benefits. Like last year, I tried to do the Ramadan fast, but uh -huh. uh, yeah, it's not for me. I love food. Like I want to eat regularly throughout the day, and I want to eat like whenever I want. And uh, I don't know. There's I always I I deceive myself with starting the fast like. Oh, well, that's not self-love, man. But really it is because you're detoxing and you're helping the body like cleanse. And yeah. if, you, if you're just like, in, you know what? This is really funny, right? The last couple of months, I've really been considering uh, like why I personally judge a lot of uh, desires such as, you know, desire to eat pizza, desire to spend your money on something that you don't necessarily need, but it'll be fun in the moment. Stuff like that, you know, just um, finding the own, my own balance that works for me because for, for a long time I've abstained from those types of things. And after abstaining, when you go back, well, not even go back to it, but like when you consider going back to it, it's a very interesting, um, I don't even know what the word is, like paradigm to be in. Like what's your thoughts on the balance thing? Yeah, so uh, I've, I've kind of before I started this fast, I started to become more of a minimalist. Mm. So I, you know, that's how it all kind of started. And where I was just looking at everything and I'm like, you know, I kind of just like look at everything from a collective point of view. And I just realized, you know, I'm super blessed and super grateful for all of it. And if I'm not using something, it just doesn't make any sense for me to just have it and hold on to it. It's kind of like you wouldn't hold on to a thought that didn't serve you. So why would you hold on to an item that you're not using? Mm. You know, you could give that item to someone or you could um, donate it, you know, um, or if it's not working, you could just throw it. But it's just like, I think um, 
I think it's just a matter of really uh, being called to do a fast that you actually will have the capability. Because I got to be honest with you, I've seen so many people, you know, um, do it. And I've actually been inspired by doing it. And I wouldn't be able to do it. I'd be like, I would always fail. But when I got called to do it, I realized that I was being helped by the divine to do it. So um, that's something to really um, be mindful as well, that you might have the calling to do it, or you might just have the interest. If you have the interest, you kind of will try, but maybe you'll fail. If you have the calling to do it, you're going to commit to it because it's something bigger than you. And, and um, I think when you are called to do something um, such as this, your um, the whole idea behind it is you want something to change. So um, mm. you can set out these, um, you know, I do what was called, like I did a prayer request, a few of them before I started my fast into, um, uh, into this journey. And I wanted to, you know, just like, this is why I'm going to fast, you know? And I think, you know, I'm not going to lie to you when you have those days where it's super challenging, I'm on Pinterest looking at food and I'm <laughs> looking, at, you know, I am. But what's funny and what's really cool about it is that your perspective while you fast is that you're not um, you, like you're not being forced in a sense. You're not being obligated to stop eating. You're choosing to stop eating. So to me, it teaches me more about my self-control and my willpower more than anything. So I think um, this is strengthening that. And so when I am, um, you know, when I break my fast, uh, whenever that may be, I know that I will go into life with a completely different mindset. So it's not like I never, I, I'm grateful to say that I'm a, I can choose whatever I want to eat at any point and at any time in my life. But, um, you know, it's not like I'm limited, but I think I see it a lot different because I'm choosing to exercise my, you know, my self-control with this fast. So I think it's um, the intention behind it and sort of like, yeah, there's so many cool benefits about fasting, but if you really start to look at it on a collective level where you just see that there's so many people all around the world, a lot of homeless people, children as well um, that are out there and they don't have that choice to choose to get to eat pizza or, you know, choose any kind of food they get to, they have to basically figure it out. You know, um, whatever's available to them is there. And so I think it changes my perspective in terms of more, um, I, I, what I would like to get from all of this is when I break my fast to live in that state of gratitude for any meal that I have and be more mindful about that because it is a blessing um, food and um, and I'm just I'm grateful that I get to be able to choose to abstain from food rather than you know completely be um, not able to eat because I don't have the means to mm, and it, it makes you appreciate the food a lot more when you abstain for a while like I think that's a lot with with everything like when they say everything in moderation if you enjoy like pineapple or pizza or whatever it is in moderation like you enjoy it way more and if you go without for a long time you you appreciate a lot more than when you than before like if you're used to eating like seven times a day it's probably not going to be a special thing for you but if you're eating like you know the whole a lot a large proportion of the day you're not eating and then you have one or two meals a day you you spend more time like appreciating the food the taste the smell like like you're saying being more mindful is such a powerful practice and in today's world we're not doing enough of that we're just like being encouraged to consume more and distract ourselves with a lot more just more 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 Ex nothing exceeds like excess is the famous line in the movie <laughs> yeah and you know it's so interesting because I also, you know, during the fasting process, you also have periods of emotional stuff that comes up for you. So, you know, some say, oh, you know, like for me, I, I started crying one day and some people were like, oh, you're crying because you're really hungry. And I'm like, no, I'm crying because I think these are feelings that I didn't acknowledge because mm. I ate my fat my feelings and that you know we we're so predisposed to like you know kind of use an emotion and mask it with food 
you know, like if there is some sort of celebration, let's eat. Um, if you're really sad, let's eat. If you're mad, I'm going to eat. If you're, you know, every single emotion can actually be defined by food. And I realize that even if you're a healthy person, you know, you're active and all that, you can still do that. You can still hide behind a meal just because you maybe are uh, fearful of, you know, really getting to the core of whatever that emotion is. I feel like you're right. There is this sort of like, you know, being pushed to the excessive, but I also feel like there is this sort of push to desensitize ourselves with not only consumerism, but with food. Mm. And it's super important to realize what food is really supposed to do for us, which is supposed to fuel us and make us feel really, really great. Um, you know, of course, everybody loves pizza. I'm a huge fan of pizza. I love every kind of pizza that there is. And I think you're right. Everything is in moderation. But yeah, you do, you do realize how much food actually will mask away, you know, your core layers um, of your, your soul's purpose you know there might be something within you that you may not even even realize that was there and so you have to kind of like dig dig really deep within mm. to, um, to really understand your core self and you do that when you allow yourself to detox and cleanse i think you know em uh, when you empty the vessel more than you like instead of trying to fill the vessel with either food or video games, alcohol, whatever it might be, like the distractions, when we allow the vessel to be just as it is, not em but empty in, in comparison to how much we're filling it, then you start to get a sense of what's within already. And I definitely, I get this a lot when I do psychedelics journeys. Like um, if I, last time I did it, it, w it made me aware of so much stuff that I hadn't yet acknowledged or was kind of leaving them in the back, uh, in the back corner. That, that reminds me, I don't know if I've asked you, have you ever taken like acid or shrooms or anything like that? No, no, I haven't. I am super like all about the, the, like the clean, you mm -hmm. know? So not that that's not clean because it's all coming from something of nature, but, um, yeah, no, I prefer like things like what I do in terms of like meditation, in terms of fasting, um, you know, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do any of that. I, I'm still abstinent, and believe it or not. And um, yeah, it's, I, I just, I kind of like that clean, you know, um, high vibe, because um, I don't know, I feel like, I think it's more challenging, if that, that makes any sense i think it like makes me earn it more you know um and i'm all about that it's, it's like weird it's like it's easy to take a psychedelic and trip for a lot a couple hours find some sort of enlightenment and then be able to be like yeah that was dope and like really have a great experience but to me i find that i can have that same reward by consistent meditation my consistent spiritual practice even fasting I find that it's super. So I, I kind of like to earn that sort of message, um, if that makes any sense. Uh, yeah, definitely. No, I, I definitely get where you're coming from. The uh, I don't on the on this channel. I don't promote the use of psychedelics, but I definitely think they're good for they're good tools to use. But there is a danger. Like the reason I don't do it so often or like plan on doing it regularly or anything is because it's to be. You, it's not like the real form of uh what's it it's like kind of like a shortcut but it comes with consequences like if you don't use it prop with respect or anything and even if you do like there's still just uh something about it that i just think it's not to be um to be to be used like just whenever oh i got a problem or i got something i want to think uh, ask myself or god okay cool let's let's turn to this like I think the reason why in ancient cultures is done so like it was used for thousands of years because it helps you go on this your spiritual journey it helps you to it helps to transport you there faster but fast is cool but you can get burnt out that's why a lot of people have like um they have like a mental breakdown when they consume psychedelics because I don't think they're ready to live in their truth just yet but if you ease into it over time and you do meditation regularly, you know, once a day, five, 10 minutes, whatever it is, and you do that for a year, you might like over the course of that year, your perspective changes very slowly. 
and you ease into your spiritual practice. Like instead of just trying to jump in at the deep end and, you know, uh, to what well, I can't sink before you swim or whatever. I, I do. I'm definitely like on board with what you're saying, but I think you just need to treat it with reverence. Like if you're not, if you, a lot of people take this, this stuff as if it's a joke, like, Oh yeah, I'm just going to have some shrooms and go to a music festival. Personally, for me, I think that that's not the right way to use it because you're basically having energetic sex with everyone around you and you don't even know half the people there or most of the people there. Some people got very toxic energy and you're picking that up from them. It fucks up your vibe majorly. Right. Yeah, I know that's so true. And um, yeah, I think it is. I think it's all about like, you know, me, for me, it's a person. For me, it's a personal decision why, you know, I choose not to go that path, but I certainly don't um, judge anyone for choosing that path. I think, um, I think it all depends on where you are in your journey and what you are intuitively guided to, to feel like you need at that moment, you know? Um, so I think, I think um, even like, have you ever heard of ayahuasca? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like I personally, I've never tried it, but um, I know for a fact that people who have like had serious blocks in their lives in terms of like, you know, just like feeling that life, like this is it, you know, like there's nothing else. Like they're really a human having a human experience and they, you know, um, take ayahuasca with a professional shaman and they're being supervised. They come out of it with all of this wisdom and they're just completely free from their own fears and their limitations. And it's such a beautiful thing that when I see something like that, I think, you know, you're using it in a way that is promoting healing, which is really what I think spirituality is all about, um, is basically understanding the idea that we're spiritual beings having a physical experience. So if we are in some sort of a uh, state of chaos, whether it's mental, physical, um, or we're just looking for some guidance, I think it's super important to promote healing. And, you know, and that's the way to, to look at it. I think, you know, it's really cool to some people to just be tripping. <laughs> <laughs> reality, reality sometimes sucks, yeah, you know, sure. and I feel for them. So I try to be very empathetic and compassionate towards the people that are like, yo, I'm just going to trip and I'm going to go to a music festival. Like, you know what? That doesn't sound like a bad idea because reality sucks for you right now. And that's probably a great way to like escape. Um, so I think that's what they're intuitively guided to do. And, but you know, everything on this planet is, um, is a school, it's a lesson. So, um, you know, if that's where they're being guided to do, they'll sort of learn from there and continue to, you know, build where, um, where they are and what they need on the, uh, the journey, because the journey is, is not, is not a straight one. It's a very interesting one. So I do find if we can promote more, um, healing, modalities of these um, psychedelics, I think um, there's just um, maybe like a miseducation, um, you know, of it. And maybe if, you know, maybe like coaches like you and I, you know, could be able to talk to people on a, on an assessment level, you know, where they're like, you know, yeah, I just want to do this. I want to trip. And it's like, okay, but why, you know, and mm -hmm. really or right? Like those layers we were talking about mm -hmm. you can then learn, like maybe they're just trying to escape most of the time they're escaping reality and it's for a reason. And, um, and then maybe, you know, putting them on something that, you know, we're on their path, they can find something that's more in tune with something that's going to come out them being, you know, better off. So, um, yeah, I think everything, everything in, um, everything in reverence, like you said, but, um, I think it all has to do with back to the mindfulness, right? It's just like being mindful of what do I really need? and uh, tuning in, you know, sometimes we just don't know. We think it's, sometimes we're hopeless, you know, sometimes we're like, oh, what, what's the point, you know? Um, but you have to really dig deep within your core self to really like find out what it is you need. And if you can somehow forget about everything that you were taught and sort of go within your soul level and find what it is that you really truly need, you'll see that it's actually nothing outside of you. And, and also, you know, the thing about 
forgetting what you what you think you know to be true is so important like I've, you know recently um some a lot of people i've been speaking on that's not a lot a few people i've spoken with have told me like um you know they've got some uh, having an existential crisis about life right okay i don't like my job that i'm doing uh but i have to do this every single day for the next x amount of years otherwise you know what the hell am i going to do and I say like, okay, cool. You have you can you have bills to pay, right? So you can pick something that takes up less of your time that still allows you to cover your stuff, and you can build something else along the side and just see how that goes. Like, just start doing things you enjoy and enjoy and bring like bring a lot of joy into your life, right? And they, this person was like, oh yeah, but you know that's not going to pay the bills and things like that. It's like providing an excuse based on conditioning every time for why we don't want to take action and change our behavior to create those results that we desire. There's so many like that, that conditioning. I think this is again, why I like fasting, meditation, yoga It's why it's so powerful because it brings you back into connection with who you are, like what you are. You're a multidimensional being in a body experiencing what it's like to be human. Not like, okay, I am, like you were saying, they just think they're here and that's it. That, that whole delusion come, and I think comes from our conditioning and to get rid of it, it's about having experiences in the present moment. I was thinking about like, how do I define God earlier? And it's like, um, God is for me, like when we, when we want to experience what that is, it, you can only experience it in moments when you're actually present, when you can actually feel uh, what's going on around you and what it's like to be in this body. But instead of that, a lot of us just go, go, go all the time. And I'm guilty of that too. I'm definitely a very like on the go person all the time. I think a lot of us are, especially if we've got goals, like a lot of us just want to smash out the goals and take loads of action. I'm definitely on board with that. But I've, def I've realized so much since doing this yin yoga practice, I've really like stripped away a lot of them. Just like you were saying, asking why there's a behavior. Okay, cool. Whether it serves you or not, it's very important to understand why. And even if it is something that's going to serve you, like working on your dreams and stuff, you can, you can do it in a way that preserves your mental and physical health, as well as getting the, uh, the results, as well as getting where, where you want to be. And I think that, that finding the balance there just comes from experience and being present. But what do you think is one of the best ways to get rid of like the conditioning of, you know, this is what it's supposed to be, or this is how you're supposed to live your life? Yeah, for sure. I know you're totally right. So um, it's funny because when I talk to some people about meditation, they kind of look at me and they tell me, so you want me to dumb myself down? And yeah, yeah, they basically think that being still is being like is dumbing yourself because, ah, okay. because you're shutting the brain off right mm. so there's this misconception that when you shut the brain off that means that you're dumb <laughs> so do you know what i mean so it's like yeah. really fascinating because when i heard that i was like oh okay so that's okay you can't like you know um you know you just kind of realize like the physical self is just looking at it from a very scientific perspective, right? Mm. If your brain's not functioning, then your IQ is dropping and you're not making <laughs> wise decisions. And I said, you know, meditation is actually has nothing to do with turning the brain off. It has to do with shutting the voices off. Mm. And they're like, well, what do you mean the voices? And I'm like, do you have a voice that's negative in your head? And they're like, absolutely. I'm like, meditation will shut that voice off and like, <laughs> okay i'm like do you have another voice that tells you like you need to do this you need to do that you need to do this like you've got to reach this you got to achieve that they're like yeah absolutely i'm like it'll shut that off and they're like well i don't want that voice to shut off i'm like that voice isn't going to shut off forever what it's going to do is it's going to shut off all the voices that are there whichever voice that you hear on a day-to-day -day basis and it's going to provide you the best voice and that's what we call bliss. You're going to hear the voice of bliss, which is ultimate silence. And you're just going to be with this rhythm of your heart, of your mind, of your soul. And you're going to flow with it just for a few minutes. And once you're done, 
you're going to start to realize that your life was a series of the voices that were dictating those decisions, not so much as your actual soul decision. And they, you know, kind of just like looked at me and they're like, yo, you're a really deep person. <laughs> <laughs> I love that though. You know, like turning off either of those voices and seeing them all as just neutral and not judging and just so many beautiful things I've learned from having a meditation practice. And it's true what they say, like meditation saves lives uh, or stops accidents. I can't remember what it was, but yeah, like when I've, I've meditated with some of the people I work with on my team recently and um they just doing that uh helps when you're working at a computer all day or when you're really trying to use the mind i think it's a great tool of course and it helps us get a lot done but at the same excuse me at the same time we need to learn to set it down and coming back to the idea of like emptying the vessel for it to fill itself or for you to find things inside to fill it is so powerful the perspective you get in meditation the ability to detach from just things, either thoughts, behavior patterns, um, you know, just ideas that you have about life or beliefs you hold about yourself. The meditation practice has taught me just this such a powerful thing of just, okay, in, if it's something that's serving you, enjoy it while it lasts. If it's something that's not serving you, understand that it's going to go. So you know, that whole thing, this too shall pass that's again like so powerful for me because i'm so yang i didn't realize how yang i was being all the time but this really the concept of being still and allowing um allowing you to get downloads allowing you to not get downloads allowing you to just have stillness is so powerful especially for the day that we're living in you know with so many uh, stimulants all around us i was watching children drinking coffee the other day and I was like, what the fuck is going that on? Is, you know what? That's so crazy because I saw the same thing this past week. And I'm mm. like, and I was reflecting and I'm like, when I was your age, I didn't need coffee because my energy was so high. I mm. was like, couldn't, people thought I was on drugs, yep. <laughs> you know? And seeing them drinking coffee, I'm like, wow, that tells you so much about how um you know the stimulants like you said they're robbing their energy and they're so young that they their 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 energy should already be at a very high peak level you know so it's very very sad so it's so interesting that you're saying that Damn. i also wanted to mention mm -hmm. about um the meditation that um um just in terms of how to sort of see it um in this way um i learned through my um you know like my a download i got was um and i'll share it with you because i wrote it down i love when i have these downloads you know you got to write these things down they're mm. super important um so i was reflecting so um we all have social pressures the only way i overcame the anxiety of failing or not being good enough was by complete self-sabotage and self-destruction Everyone knows the way to fail, and at least it's something you have control over, which eases the anxiety of the unknown that success brings. Once you have failed, you can build upon success because you no longer fear it. Failure is the concrete foundation of every big success. Failure is control. Success is surrender. And I, you know, I got that download, and I was like, wow, that's really why we need meditation because we're surrendering to the divine that's always been in control see the control that we think we're under it's all an illusion so we have to allow ourselves these times to take a break from our own illusions which are our voices right and really surrender to who's really in charge and mm. you mentioned about god and like how you define god for me, I define God obviously as the divine. Um, I have a very, you know, um, personal relationship with Jesus, but as an ascended master. And I can tell you that the way that I view God is by faith, 100% unshakable faith. Mm. It's this whole concept of you can believe in faith, you can walk in faith, but how do you feel faith? 
And I think you feel it when you completely and ultimately surrender. Yeah, you're so right. I love that. Um, the, the idea of success being surrender. It's the, the, uh, the ego always wants to try and control stuff or like, you know, be something other than, uh, sorry, do something other than surrender to the fact that it can't control what's going to happen tomorrow or what happened yesterday. It can't have that effect that it wants to have on them. And I think that's just so powerful to remind ourselves of every day. Like we don't have control over every single thing. It's going to be a few things that, okay, yeah, you know, I have agency over my vessel. I choose what I fill it with, that kind of stuff. But when, when we give up the sense of having to uh, be in charge, then you can, I think one of my friends said it the best. It's like, I don't really know what I'm doing. I just trust in the feeling that it gives me and everything else is I just feel like it's being decided for me. But yeah, that whole thing about just trusting where you're going and allowing things to unfold for you. That's how I, I think purpose and having God in your life really ties all of that stuff together. Yes, absolutely. And it's truly such a rewarding idea um, to just realize that we're just following our intuition, you know, we just have to allow ourselves to just feel that faith, you know, um, cause you know, there's so many of us that can say, Oh, I believe in a higher power, or I believe in something bigger than myself, or I believe tomorrow will be better. You know, um, that idea of, you know, something, some, something that's, you can't see, but you believe, right. And you can say, Oh, I walk in this and I walk in it completely, but you have to really feel it. And, it, the more that we cleanse ourselves, you know, and we live these high vibe lifestyles and these conscious free lifestyles, like for me, um, it's been uh, almost three years I haven't drank. Um, it's been like seven years I haven't smoked cigarettes. Um, uh, you know, I truly live just like a very conscious, uh, you know, conscious lifestyle. And I don't do it for the, um, cause I know that there's a lot of people in our community that love to show off about how conscious they are, which is so, <laughs> fun, you know, cause I'm like, okay, I see what you're doing. It's like, you want to make it like, you know, almost like competitive, but you know, remember ego is competition. Mm -hmm. So um, I tend to find that when you share your journey, um, from this conscious lifestyle, it should be done in a place from a place of humility and it should be done from a place of vulnerability um, where you can like tell people like, hey, I also am a human. I also had addictions. I also suffered from things. Um, but I also learned that I also have incredible willpower. So it's like funny because someone who can be addicted to things also can have strong willpower. And I think that that in itself is such a mystery. And um, I think if we allow ourselves and at least give ourselves that opportunity to just allow ourselves to find within ourselves, you know, um, what we're truly capable of, I think uh, the possibilities are endless. You, you know, know what you said about addiction and willpower? I think it's really interesting that uh, when you're addicted to something, your willpower to obtain it is extremely strong. But when you, when you abstain from it, you can use that same strength of willpower to do other things. And that's why I think the people who've suffered with you know, addictions or any like d dysfunctional behaviors, they often, well, not often, but I don't know how often it is, but they, a lot of those people who've suffered greatly have gone on to do great things. And I think that's why, for me, one of the best things I ever heard was the depth of your suffering determines the height of your success but only if you allow it to, like, obviously you can continue suffering as long as you choose to. But that, that thing about willpower, I think that's really interesting. What I've seen personally in my own journey as well, I've been addicted to many things, especially yeah. video games and that the willpower then to, okay, whatever it takes, I'm going to get this video game or I'm going to complete this level. I can translate that to a lot of different other areas of my life. And that's, I think that's why I get a lot done. Right. Absolutely. And it's just, you know, it's, it's cool though, that you're super aware. That's another key, key thing on this path is becoming aware of yourself. Um, even something like, like an example, like playing video games, you know, just like being aware of like, 
wow, you know, look at how hard I go on these video games, you know, mm. like I go hard. Like I'm like, you know, I'm trying to get the Olympics, you know, like the gold medal. At this <laughs> and it's like, and then you may then go and look at life and maybe, you know, and I'm not speaking about you. I'm speaking about uh, just a general example. Someone may be really great at video games and like just really have that sort of um, drive to, to, to win at this video game, but yet have no motivation in life. Mm. And I think when you, the reason for that is because they're not being aware that the same drive that it took you to win the video game is the same drive that's going to take you to win the game of life. And, you know, it's just, we have to be super aware of our own, you know, powers and how, you know, if we can apply ourselves in one aspect in our lives, then we can apply ourselves in all aspects of our lives. We just have to be aware of what that feeling is. What is it that drives us? What is it that motivates us? And um, what is it that basically gives us that perseverance to never give up? You know, mm. so um, I think that's super important as well on the spiritual journey is that awareness. And you find that awareness, believe it or not, by meditation and by yoga and by fasting, because you're basically taking a moment to observe yourself without judgment and just really see, wow, you know, I'm a very, you know, complex person with different layers, but I'm choosing to learn about every single one in a very, you know, um, in like an observer mode. Mm. So it's, it's super powerful to, to know that awareness is a, it's a superpower. Yeah, definitely. I liken the awareness thing to, you know, when you, it's, it's such a powerful thing to be able to observe your own actions, your own behaviors. And that's the drug you need, not this like, acid or ayahuasca or anything like that yeah you obviously you can use them but the present moment awareness one is free so that's good two is legal so no one can take that away from us and three like you don't have to be some sort of magician or shaman or extraordinary person to be able to do it you just tune into the now and there's like you said so many other ways of doing that um yeah. gabriella it's been great speaking with you again um, it's been awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, we're definitely going to do more of these. Um, obviously, not uh, weekly, but yeah, I want to want to have you on the show again as regularly as possible. Um, if anyone wants to get a hold of you or wants to check out your website, or wants to get hire you for coaching, where's the best place for them to hit you up? They can hit me up at www.soulexcelsior.com. You can check out my Instagram, Soul Excelsior, Twitter, Facebook, Soul Excelsior. And I am always available if you want to email directly, soulexcelsior at gmail.com. Awesome. Thank you so much. All of those links are going to be in the description. Um, if you're watching the video, there's going to be the artist who made all of this stuff that you're seeing on the screen. Their contact information is going to be in the description. Hit those links, show some love. And we'll see you all next time. Peace. Love. <laughs>